Generally speaking, if it acts like a duck, quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, then it's a duck. In this case, though, this looks like a graphics card. I mean, it basically slots in like a graphics card, but it's not a graphics card. This is the fastest SSD the world has ever seen. Well, it's a consumer-based SSD that the world has ever seen, and it's super interesting. But before we dive into it, remember to hit that like button at the end of the video and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the future videos. Let's get into it. And here it is, guys. This is the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme Gen 4 AIC. AIC stands for Add-in Card. Obviously, this looks like a graphics card. So how on earth do they get all that NVMe on this very much graphics card looking? It actually looks like a mining graphics card because it doesn't have any um, input and, uh, or output here. No HDMI, no display port, nothing like that. So it looks pretty much like a graphics card. It even uses an 8-pin, single 8-pin for power to power up all these NVMe drives that they plugged into this. So one thing we need to remember, or maybe the first thing to notice, is this is not a single 32-bit NVMe drive, like one big one. It actually consists out of eight 4-terabyte NVMe drives. And that's how they managed to cram it into such a neat-looking little package. I think this thing looks absolutely gorgeous. Two fans to keep it cool you can imagine that eight nvme drives will actually heat up quite quickly especially with a transfer rate of 28 gigabytes a second so already we can see here that it says it's up to 32 terabytes which in my opinion mean they will probably be different variants considering that to get to 32 terabytes they had to add eight four terabyte nvme drives into this PCB and one of the biggest reasons how they can obtain this speed is because of this fantastic controller which I haven't really heard of before but apparently it's quite a big deal it's called the is it Fison Fison Fusion Fison something like that that specific controller is the reason why they can maintain or attain those type of speeds now i'm guessing that this controller will be on every single nvme drive that gigabyte decides to put into the aic so there we have it that's how they managed to do it and aic as we can see here the adding card is actually meant for server type environments where you can easily plug it in and out hot swappable into servers so this is what a general aic would look like they'll have the pcb board over there that slots into the motherboard and then you'll have your nvme drive sort of like a compatibility slot then slot into it and then tie it down in other words there's no picture unfortunately of the gigabyte aorus extreme AIC that they're launching that we're talking about here, but imagine eight of these on one PCB. That is really tight. No wonder they have to put on a massive heat sink and they have to put on two fans just to cool it down. And if the heat sink and fan are not enough, they've added 10 thermal sensors to make sure that those NVMe drives are not going to overheat and I'm guessing there's some sort of temperature control built in so when they heat up the fans will start spinning faster and in not so heavy workloads they will probably be cooler which means the fan will run quieter the same as a graphics card. Another interesting thing to see is that it will actually come with the Gigabyte exclusive SSD toolbox which is awesome. I don't think I've ever really seen an exclusive toolbox for SSDs, but this is amazing. I'm looking forward to see how this would work and what optimization you can get out of it. Moving on to some benchmarks briefly. As we can see with Crystal Disk, Gigabyte has managed to get a sequential read speed of 28 gigabyte and a write speed of 26 gigabytes per second, which is absolutely insane. Sane. I mean, if you compare this with like a, 
uh, an NVMe that will cost you an arm and a leg, like the Samsung 980, for example. That one, I think, has a read or write speed of about 7 gigabits per second. And this thing will absolutely annihilate it. Now, most of you would already know that just by adding in more NVMe drives into your system is not necessarily going to give you a performance boost or benefit. So there has to be some sort of RAID array to try and get more performance out of read and writes out of your system. So with the Gigabyte Toolbox, you are actually able to enable RAID 0 with a single click, which is super convenient. Now, we also know that RAID 0 doesn't necessarily give you the best uh, stacked performance when it comes to that. But Gigabyte's point of view here is that for a client SSD, normal desktop SSD, your sequential reads is probably going to be used 99.9% .9 more often than a random read and write as in a server that has to go and retrieve random information for random instructions whereas with a desktop version you would probably be gaming on it or doing something that just requires sequential read instead of random now another question is that that sort of performance is going to require a heck of a lot of pci lanes now this is interesting because this thing, you won't be able to just plug into any slot. It needs to be a 16 times Gen 4 slot to get this type of performance. And as you know, there are not a lot of systems out there that offer more than one 60 times Gen 4 slot on a motherboard. Actually, you need to be looking at either a Threadripper, an Epic CPU. We're not going to go down the Intel Xeon because I think that's just not... A even an option right now. So a Threadripper or an Epic CPU, which is more like a server-based CPU, lots of threads, lots of PCI lanes. The main reason is that the motherboards for those support multiple 16 time Gen 4 slots, which you will need if and only if you want to play with a graphics card in your system. So if you are running even the latest Ryzen 5000 series or 11th Gen from Intel, your motherboard more than likely only has one times 16 slot for your graphics card. So in other words, if you have for some reason an SLI motherboard, which is basically dead according to Nvidia or even a Crossfire motherboard, then generally what would happen is you would split your lanes and you would have not 16 times, but you would have eight and eight and this will all impact the performance. So even if you have the physical slot, it doesn't mean that you have enough PCIe lanes available to have this sort of speed on an NVMe SSD. So those are unfortunately the realities behind this type of performance for now, maybe down the line, we can see better performance, we can see uh, better compatibility with real desktop <laughs> components, for now, I anyways think that this is priced very high. There's no official price, but I can tell you right now, this thing is going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars. If we look at what NVMe, even a four terabyte NVMe drive, what it costs, this is going to be expensive. Now, what I would like to see from this product is that you'll be able to buy the AIC by itself, which is not uncommon there are a lot of these AICs available even from gigabyte previous versions that you can buy and you can add your own NVMe drives in which would be fantastic because 32 terabytes is just ridiculous and uh, I would like to see lower capacity what about a 4 terabyte version that has let's say 512 gigabyte versions times 8 to get to the 4 terabyte version so that you still get the speed that this offers without having to break the bank or break into a bank. On the other hand, what on earth would you do on a normal desktop PC with this sort of performance? I can't think of a single use case that is not a professional workstation use case, like just a normal gaming PC. What would you gain from this? We have direct storage coming from Windows 11 pretty soon, which will increase game loading times and open world games and all of that stuff. And that's another video for another day. But 
Having said that, I can't think of a single use case for this. I mean, sure, you can load things faster, but I mean, at what premium are you willing to pay to load something faster? Anyways, that's my two cents. Let me know if you have anything to add. I would love to know your thoughts on this specific device. I think it is an absolute beaut and the speeds are ridiculous. Does it have a use case though? In my opinion, not really. Maybe if it has lower capacities, you can still do it. But offering up a graphics card and a normal system for a fast NVMe, nah, I'm not too sure. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe, remember, if you haven't, and I will see you in the next video.